UPASS has a mission to assist all pilots in safety and standards. The following video will help you understand how to file for a 137. Let's get started. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, requires a 14 CFR Part 137 Agricultural Operating Certificate for various agricultural operations using an agricultural drone. The Part 137 Agricultural Aircraft Operation is defined as the operation of an aircraft for the purposes of dispensing any economical poison and any other substance intended for plant nourishment, soil treatment propagation of plant life, or pest control. This also includes water. Finally, it also covers engaging in dispensing activities directly affecting agriculture, horticulture, or forest preservation, but not including the dispensing of live insects. The Part 137 certificate, however, is the last step in the entire process. To receive the Part 137 certificate, a 44807 exemption must first be submitted and approved by the FAA. To get a 137 certificate will require a 107 pilot license, Class 3 medical, what type of drone to be flown, and its registered N number, naming a Chief Supervisor of Operations, and naming a pilot in command, or a PIC who must have a Part 107 certification. All of the following links and information can be found on upass.foundation under FAA Compliance, halfway down the front page. Now, let's take a look at the requirements to get a 137. First, a 107 pilot license will require a pilot to be at least 16 years old, able to read, speak, write, and understand English, be in a physical and mental condition to safely fly a drone, and finally, pass the initial aeronautical knowledge exam known as the Unmanned Aircraft General, or for short, the UAG. After studying, it's time to take the test. Start by creating an IACRA account at iacra.faa.gov. This will assign you an FTN number. Then create a PSI account and schedule your test at fa.psiexams.com, physical testing centers near you. You can find locations at the top of the page in red, Find a Testing Center. With a passing score, the testing center will provide you with a completion slip that requires you to go back to your IACRA account and complete the 8710-13 form for your remote pilot's license. The reason it's important to do this first is because you will need your actual remote pilot license to apply for your 44807, and it could take up to six weeks with the TSA background check. To keep your Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate current, every two years you must complete the small UAS Recurrent Online Training Course, offered at no cost to you. The link can be found at the UPASS Foundation front page. There is also a fast path for current man pilots through the FAA Safety Team, FASTEAM, website. Step 2. We say Step 2 because pilots do not want to purchase a drone, get their pilot's license, insurance, and register their drone to only realize that they have a medical condition that will not let them get a Class 3 medical. So let's get this done ASAP. The FAA has a list on their website of approved aviation medical examiners in their area. Little trick, do not put in your zip code, just your state. You can also reach out to your local flight school and ask them where their pilots get their FAA medicals. Prior to your doctor visit, create an account with FAA MedExpress, create an application and take your tracking number to the visit. Step 3. No matter what type of drone is purchased, the process to register over 55-pound drones is the same. Just a quick note, if you do not complete the process to register the drone to the FAA's satisfaction initially, the FAA will send it back and this will cause further delays in the overall Part 137 process. Hopefully, this video will clarify information needed so it will go through right the first time. Our recommendation is to first reserve an N number. Although this is an additional $10, it allows pilots to reserve up to five N numbers at once, which is particularly helpful if more than one drone is purchased. A remittance ID number will be sent, which will be in green, after submitting the payment that confirms the reservation. Additionally, a cover letter can be downloaded to accompany the next forms we are going to review. These are the 8050-1, which is the application form for the registration plus the drone invoice from the dealer or in lieu of the invoice, A8050-2 can be filed, which is the FAA's bill of sale. Most of the time, the 8050-2s are used in a resale situation. Both situations require an affidavit of ownership in both situations, and finally, a $5 check made out to FAA Aircraft Registration Branch. If you are registering your drone under a LLC, there is an additional form called the Statement in Support of LLC. Again, it can be downloaded from UPASS. Be sure your invoice and all forms all have the same business name or individual name and address as on the 
There are two addresses listed to send the package to on the first page of the 8050-1, located at the front right side. If you are sending via USPS, send it to FAA Aircraft Registration Branch, PO Box 25504, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73125-0504. If you are sending via FedEx or UPS, utilize the courier address. Step 4. To actually file for a 137 starts with filing for a 44807 exemption. Pilots can do that themselves, but the process, not going to lie, can be a bit cumbersome if they have never done it before. Plus, if it's not done correctly, will be sent back and possibly be delayed by months. Again, there is a link on the UPASS site to work with one of the top-rated companies to ensure compliance the first time submitted. Since May 2024, the FAA has added some additional information it requires when filing for your 44807. It includes the following. Provide the applicant's full legal name and address or business name and physical address. Who is the chief supervisor of operations, meaning the point of contact for the petitioner answering any potential FAA questions regarding the applicant's operations and their phone number, email address, and physical address? Who will be the pilot in command or PIC for the proposed UAS operations? Not only their name, but their current pilot certificate number. And finally, what aircraft will operate under this exemption? Aircraft's make, model, and end number, for example, N123UA. If no end number is available yet, then a serial number will suffice. Now it's time to file for your 44807. Okay, you have received your 44807, but you wanted a 137. These are not the same and are often confused as one in the same. The part one, 37 certificate is the next and final step to this entire process. When you receive your approved 44807 exemption, read it. The application for the Part 137 certificate will be attached to the Exemption and Conditions and Limitations, which is number two, where it explains where to send the attached 8710-3 application. There will also be a blanket COA attached to the exemption that gives additional operating instructions to be followed prior to flying. It will require again listing the information about the pilots and drones flying under this COA, as well as your Chief Supervisor of Operations. Prior to issuing the Part 137 certificate, the FAA will also verify the PIC's third-class medical certificate. If the FAA cannot locate this information, they will ask you to provide proof with the 8710-3. But that's just the beginning. Be sure to watch UPASS's other compliant videos to help you understand what is required by the FAA to keep your 137. Thanks for watching our guide on how to obtain a 137 agriculture license. Note that all of this takes time, a 107 license after the test can take six weeks to get your actual pilot's license. Drone registration can also take six weeks. The 44807 can take as much as three to four months. So plan for that. Again, all of this information is on UPASS, where we encourage you to become a member and have access to all the state's regulations and any FAA updates. In the meantime, stay safe and good luck with your licensing journey.